Thank you very much. Can you guys hear all right? Yeah. Okay, good, just making sure. I did push the button right. So um, I really, really appreciate you guys coming out here. Um, if you don't understand me, that's because I'm still learning this hard language of English. <laughs> so I just want to uh, show my appreciation that you actually in this room, everybody showed up in the fitness business because as we know, this industry is basically called the I know it all industry. <laughs> <laughs> just like how Mike said it, it's um, just like how Mike said it, that everybody in this industry just literally just like, oh, I already know it. I don't need to talk to anybody. Uh, and I'm figure, figuring it out on my own. And unfortunately, that's the case in this industry. But you guys are already in this room. It makes me really happy. But who wouldn't want to be here on a Saturday learning from a guy on stage who does not speak English? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, is the slide, have a little issue with the slides or? Yeah. You good? OK, good. Yeah, okay, so um, obviously it improved a lot. So if you still don't understand me, just please call out, it's okay, I will repeat what I said and you will probably still want to understand it. But uh, go, uh, moving forward, English did give me a tons and tons of trouble. And when I mean lots of troubles, I mean like a lot in wife, at home, in the house, at employees, everybody, I see crazy faces when I talk to somebody. And then they just look at me like I'm crazy and I'm just like, you know, you're ugly or whatever. Like, I'm not saying that, but <laughs> that's what it sounds like to them when I say something, when I, we're speaking face to face because I'm just upfront with them. So, so speaking of those faces, it actually happens all the time. Even now, uh, we've, we've been married for five years and it still happens all the time. This is my <laughs> wife, actually. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that's her regular facial impressions around me. And I blame it on the English, but now that I come to think of it and I look at her because she's standing right there, it seems like that it's not my English, it might be just me. So, sorry about that. <laughs> I might need a place to stay tonight. <laughs> but uh, moving on, jokes aside, did you guys actually see that one of my main sales points for this event was actually um, that I don't speak English? So, obviously the bar is low. No, I'm just kidding, it's not. I'm, jokes aside, let's start. <laughs> so, if I did it, anybody can do it. And I would like to get started today with that. I came, what just like Mike said, absolutely nothing. I came to the States with no English whatsoever about nah, seven years ago. And then I have met my wife about a year and a half into that. And then we basically started our business with absolutely nothing. And when I mean absolutely nothing, um, first of all, again, lots of miscommunication, misunderstanding. And then literally um, we went to gyms or our gym at that time already to basically, uh, not even kidding, like use up toilet paper. So take home toilet paper from the studio to home so we have enough at home and then bring back, don't flush the toilet, you know, let, uh, if it's yellow, let it mellow, that kind of stuff. <laughs> so <laughs> we, we literally went from that to what we have today. And now we have about uh, three businesses, about 30 employees, uh, a best-selling book without English, and then basically just what we have to, oh, and the best part, of course, we are working towards preventing muscle atrophy so NASA could actually get our astronauts to safely colonize Mars. So that's a big deal that we are working on. Um, I can't tell you anything more about it right now, but besides, we are going to have a huge research. It's going to be all on TV. It's going to be documented next March. It's a zero gravity research on a decked out private jet. I mean, sorry, jet. Okay, so the reason why I'm on this stage today because Mike have asked me to come out and share uh, before we actually get to business to share my four crazy habits as he mentioned before too that these habits are we think and I think and so many people who have featured on their show or podcast things that has something to do with my success and continue to do with my success and the reason also I'm on this stage is because I have learned on this process since I started these habits that passing down knowledge is like passing down DNA it is more important than the individual person because it leaves th uh, beyond the individual person's life. So today, here I am to try to give you everything I got to help you and able to show you how to struggle well in this crazy competitive market. And at the very least, to show you how to get the most 
out of every single unit effort that you will put into your business and personal development. So let's get started. One of my first habits, okay, there we go. So number one, I recommend to everybody to work while your competition sleeps. And what I mean by that is, it uh, doesn't mean, for me it actually means I get up at 4.45 a.m. every single day, besides Sunday, because Sunday I need my beauty rest and I sleep until 5.07. So, but, uh, but the jokes aside again, the, since I started getting up at early, and probably you guys seen Mike's uh, Snapchats all the time and Instagrams, that he also gets up, I think at 4.30, I believe, yeah. every day. Yeah, awesome, yes. And uh, that, since I have been doing, changed my life. But, so I already see some expression of, in the audience that some of you were like, oh, this is your secret? That's nothing, I already get up at four. And some of you basically, I can see that I'm not gonna get up at 4.45. But uh, <laughs> here's the thing, I am not a morning person. And you can ask my wife, although you might want to wait a little bit because she still looks a little pissed off about the RBF. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I realized that at, at some point of time in life, somebody or my competition uh, will get up at that time and either put me out of business or I'm just gonna stay at the middle level where we were. So. The question is that what on earth are you doing at 4.45 a.m.? So in my case, and in your case, if you are, by the way, how many are there, mainly everybody here is a gym owner or personal trainer? Like who is a gym owner here? Just I wanted to see, awesome. And who is like actually in the business training as a personal trainer? Anyone? Okay, a few, perfect. So there, we'll talk about both, but the reason I wanted to bring this up because if you are a personal trainer, even if a, if a gym owner right now, more than likely at 4.45 a.m. you're either uh, working out yourself or um, you actually training clients. And that's what I did too. And I maxed out because I had clients from basically 5 a.m. till 10 p.m. for the first three years of my life when I uh, started to put this all together. And then I'm working harder and harder. My wife did the same thing. And we weren't growing because we maxed out our time. And at that time I had no understanding of business the first three years. And uh, these habits that I started, I started two years ago, and basically in one year we went from one location to five location, and basically from three employees to about 30 employees now. And that was basically a year and a couple of months. So, so the, the, the reading part, sorry, didn't hit. So I'm learning why my competition actually lives. So what does that mean? That I read about two to three hours every single morning when I get up, including Sunday too. I just don't get up at 4.45 on Sunday. But on Saturday too, I get up and I read for about two to three hours. And the question is, um, is what do you read? So I read anything that is related to my industry or if I read anything that is related to either my strength or weaknesses. Usually I want to triple down on my strength because it has to push away my weaknesses, at least I hope it does. Uh, so that's why I try to like appear nicer and uh, just smile all the time, even though when I speak, sometimes some people get angry at me. Anyways, so um, what do you read is something that is industry related. Now the second question is that how do you read? So that's the big question because so many people read a lot and read lots of books, but don't contain any of the information that they read. And the problem is because most people just read and let go what they have read. But every single time I highly recommend it, that you pick up a book and you already go into, like I have a book of libraries, right? And I don't read in order. I find out what I need to work on this month, for example. And then I pick out the right uh, books that it will help me the most. So you literally just have to pick the right ones that will help you to skyrocket your business the most and skyrocket your personal development as well. And so you can develop everybody around you. And uh, because if you know, but you're not yet to use, it's basically not yet knowing. So there's no point in reading if you're not taking action on it. And the number one to take action is literally going to create a book plan that I call them, just like a business plan when you start a business. And what you do is you literally put down on paper that this is what I want to get out of this book. And as long as you start like that, and if the book doesn't suck, so I hope mine does not for you, then you will find something out, so you will find what you're looking for at that book. And then the lastly that people always ask me this because I read a lot and I read eight books a month. I really don't recommend that, to, that you start out reading eight books a month. Um, unless you're doing that, then go ahead. But it's not about the amount, it's about again, what you're getting out of it. So I don't always read eight books a month, but I average out about six to eight. So 
But the thing what I would recommend that you pick out actually one book and read it eight times in one month because you will learn more from that one single book that you would learn from the eight books that you have read. So moving on, if you don't have this plan of reading, I highly recommend that you pick that up because it's huge. It, it, it really, really, really contributed to my success and able to, uh, to uh, raise our revenue just because of what I've learned from books. And of course, conferences like this. And the other thing is the reason why I read in the morning at 4.45 a.m. because I can stay focused. And if, if you, uh, just like me, Monday mornings, you have problems, lots of problems coming in sometimes, especially when you have lots of employees. And when I mean problems, they're good problems. Like, oh, we don't have this, we don't have that. So many customers, leads came in. If you work with Mike, probably your number one problem is to how to handle the leads as they're coming in. And then uh, all these little issues or big issues at that time just distract you. In the morning at 4.45 a.m., nobody's up besides my dog. So I can literally just lay down and read and read and read and really focus on it. And uh, I can do, uh, by the way, I'm not saying to quit working out. I'm not saying to not go to the gym. I'm not saying you have to get up at 4.45 a.m. I'm saying that if you want to have a different result than what you're having right now and move up or above your competition, you need to find a way that will suit you the most that you can actually learn while your competition lifts. And I can lift in the afternoon, that's totally fine, but I cannot study or learn in the afternoon. So that's why I'm just recommending to you that this would be a really habit for you to figure out. And this next slide, I'm like shake it to push the button because I feel like most of you will walk out when you hear it. So what it is is that allows me to, speaking of focus, to able to stay focused, I actually earn while your competition, while my competition eats. And again, I'm not recommending to really pick this up and do this, but what I do, and this is one of the crazy things that always get talked about when I get on a show or anywhere, is that I stop eating Sunday at 8 p.m. and I won't start eating until Tuesday at 1 p.m. after my workout. And the reason why I do this, and because, and don't, looks like everybody stayed by the way, so that's good. But uh, the reason why I do this is because it allows me on Monday to stay crazy, crazy focused on my projects. And again, if you are just like me, and it looks like you are because you're here and learning, then you have so many things to do on Monday and you can get sidetracked and distracted and just so many things can be done. So to get ahead of competition, I literally skip eating completely on Monday so I can just nail everything down and put all the work in. So, and I, I don't get angry, by the way, you, you get through it. You don't, don't start this again. This, you, you can't just jump into fasting, just like stop eating on Sunday because I told you so, and then now you're gonna pass out on a Monday afternoon or during a workout. But uh, this is just a habit that really contributed to your success and keeps continuing to contribute because to give you just a little math on this, if I don't eat on Mondays, 52 weeks of the year, so basically a whole year, that allows me to save about two hours every Monday. So that allows me to actually have 13 days of eight hour work days, which means I'm working two weeks more in a year than my competition. And the reason why I did this is because again, uh, how many of you here, um, your gym or as personal trainer have more than 50,000 in revenue in a year, not month? Okay, so that's more than half, that's great. Congratulations, because that actually means that you are better than average because if you, and I don't mean better, you're already doing better than average, that's what I mean, because um, unfortunately in the US, the average business makes about 50,000 in revenue a year. So if you want to have that, then keep doing what you're doing. But if you want to have better, you have to develop these type of habits. And then the other question is, how much, is there anybody who make over 1 million in a year? Awesome. But are you, I thought you're an accountant, right? Okay, so that doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I pay attention. So, um, but the, nobody put up their hand, is, is that right? Okay, good, awesome. So that's basically what one person of the room, I guess we can call it, but it's really about 4% of the industry that actually make over a million in revenue. And that's a huge deal. And if you think about it, anybody when starts a business, they say, I'm gonna make millions of dollars. And as you can see, that's not the case. It's barely anybody makes it. So, so unless you wanna have the same results that they are having, you really need to pick up on these habits. So the next one is, um, yes, there we go. So the next one is that I would really like you to pick up right away, by the way, just because this is really, really important. Um, and I highly recommend it to everyone. 
And I believe Mike is doing similar things to this as well. But what it is is I reflect, I want you to reflect why your competition reacts. Just like when a crazy market crashed back in the time, so many people actually benefited from it and so many people did not, unfortunately. But the thing is that it's not because good thing happened to them or bad thing happened to them, it's what they did, what happened to them. So to some people, the really bad things are the biggest opportunities. It's just really how you take action on them. And what this allows me to do to train my brain to able to actually look in, in the positive into every single thing that I do or happens to me. So for example, in the morning when I get up, uh, and Grant Cardone does this, for example, too, uh, every morning I write down every single goal that I have for the year. And I did, started this actually about five years ago. And speaking on a stage was one of them. And when I shared it to people, they were like, you're never going to do that. Nobody understands you. You suck. You, you don't even speak English. <laughs> but that's the story of my life, because it happened with everything that I have done, even opening studios. Nobody believed in me. Uh, I literally told my parents when I came to the US by myself alone, uh, and that I got picked by a hockey team to play professional hockey, which I played before, but I was already injured, so I couldn't play anymore. And, but they believed me. I even did this fake paper that is an invitation to the US and showed my mom that, hey, I got picked. They don't pay my airplane ticket, though. Can you please front this? And then she did. And then I came here, and I had no plans to play hockey. They didn't even bring my hockey back, by the way. So <laughs> I, I told her that they're going to buy me new ones, so just leave it at home. So uh, anyways, that's how I literally got here. And the point is that nobody believed in any of that that I'm doing. And the goals, the bigger the goals are, the better it is. So if people laugh about your goals, then you are onto something. Unless it's, they're really stupid. But no, they're not. <laughs> okay. So uh, the next thing, uh, at the end of the day, and this is how I reflect, I write down three things that happened to me that day, but positive things. So this allows me to train my brain how to look at basically every single day and just pick out the positive things that are happening. And and the thing is, I'll give you an example in a second, and you can decide if it's a good day or a bad day But uh, for me, but, uh, and for you, what it would be. But um, it's really, really amazing, because have, how many of you ever had a day when you were like, oh, I just want to quit. I see the signs driving on a highway after a really bad day, and you see like billboards that are saying, like the AA meetings, it says, quit now, and uh, you can do it, and all these things, and you just makes you think about, again, that you, you're thinking that, oh, this is a signal. I need to quit my business. This is really not for me. How many of you have one of those days, at least? Yeah, so almost everybody, right? So me too. But those are not signals. The God doesn't tell you that you suck and you need to quit or anything like that. It's no signal whatsoever. What it is, is, is your brain is not trained in a way to look at the positives. Because if it is, then what you do is you drive home, see the same exact billboards. You even see a goat on the side, the side of the road. It makes you think that you are a goat, the greatest of all time. Before, you just started just wasting away on the side of the road. Or you see the same billboards and then it says, uh, you can do it, you're a winner. So see, it's really changing your mindset. And that's what I do every single day. No, no, no like days off, even Sunday, every day, write the three things down, and it helps me to reflect on a positive thing. So how many of you would say this is a good or a bad day? I, walk, I, I pick up the phone, somebody was ringing, it was, it was one of our employees, and he literally calls me and he says, I, first, before he says, I hear water, like water splashing everywhere. And then I hear a woman screaming in the background like, ah! And then I'm like, what's going on? And then why aren't you not working Monday at 9.30 a.m.? Are you at a water park? And then he goes, no, there's water everywhere here. I'm like, yeah, that's what they have at water park. And then he, he literally says, no, at the studio, one of our pipes bursted and there's water everywhere. I'm like, oh, great. So I get over there, I open the door, and literally I see my trainer, a very big guy, and uh, in his tidy whities, nothing else, like completely naked, just tidy whities, standing like this, lifting up the washer and dryer, like well, both of them almost together, trying to like, just scream and throw shit, sorry, shit everywhere. And uh, what happened is the, the thingy, what do you call it, the pipe busted, water sprayed everywhere on our fuse box. He's up to uh, ankle high water while there are sparks flying, right? So I was like, oh, he's going to get electrocuted. And then the client is still hooked into a machine and just standing there, and they literally screaming like, wah, and then says, mmm, wah, mmm. You know what's the mmm for, right? Because seeing their trainer all oiled up and wet, lifting stuff, <laughs> but, so she can't decide if it's good or bad. But, uh, but after that, it took us six hours to clean it out, right? So after that six hours, 
uh, everybody was like, oh, this day sucks, I need to go home. We didn't get anything done. There was a really bad mood at the office of 12 of us at that location at that point. And I was like, no, guys, this was a really, really good thing that happened. We got really lucky. And they're like, yeah, okay, you're full of shit. So anyways, so they were like, no, here's the thing. What happened is, and what could have happened, first of all, nobody died. He could have died very easily because literally there was sparks out. That's why you have to replace so many equipment because everything almost burned down. And then, secondly, what also haven't happened is that if we weren't here that day, then if it happened overnight, then all of a sudden we would have no studio and I wouldn't be here today because I would be still probably rebuilding a studio because this was two weeks ago. So it was a good day. I was happy. So, and then once I told the employees, they were happy too. So, and that's why I always say that everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. And that was a punch, right? So, but it was fun. I went on with my day very happy, smiling. Now, the next thing that I want to tell you that I really don't want you to do, well, I mean, you can do and pick up all my habits, but what I really want you to do is, is find your own way. To some of you, it might mean to get up at 4.45 a.m., but to some of you, it means to stay up till 2 a.m. while I'm sleeping because it's just you finding out your way and all I want you to do is find a way why you can or how you can earn, learn and work while your competition and reflect while your competition actually just wasting away for that matter. So that's what I'm asking you to do. I'm not asking to copy everything that I do here. I ask you to find your own way. Is it okay? Okay, good. Now, this is what Mike talked about is what, what we start doing once we start picking up our phone it helped us basically adding $12,500 in recurring revenue and not just picking up the phone and hey, you know, that's not what I mean by that, but how many of you in this room knows that what are your chances to ever make a sale if you do not pick up the phone, of the, not the first ring, but in the first five minutes or at least the first hour? Like, anybody knows what's the percentage, how much it drops your chances? Somebody said 40. And by the way, whoever guesses this, I will give you a book and I will even sign it so you will probably be able to sell it $5 more. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, anybody, or if, you, if, because, anybody else? You said 47? 80. Or 80? 70? 70. 90. 90? It's not a bidding, by the way. You can say higher numbers. But it's, uh, <laughs> so it's 900%. And uh, it's really crazy, but I tell you, I'll let you in a secret. This is 900% for the whole industry as a whole. For fitness industry, when we did 3,000 phone calls, and we experienced on this on our end because now we're doing lots of phone calls, like a lot. Uh, what we learned is that actually if you don't uh, call back in the first hour, that is actually only 79%. Somebody says 79, right? Yes. Okay, Please. good, okay, you will get the book. Do you, would you like the book with a signature or, or the book with five bucks? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a, this to me is 900 reasons why you need to pick up the phone. I mean, I have an employee wearing this shirt all day at the office, and every single day he has to wear this shirt to reflect to that 900 person rule. And so we actually live it. I'm not just saying these things, I actually live and experience and do all these things, just like Mike does with so many things that he's doing at his office. I mean, you heard it, it's, it's cool name, GSD, but they actually live it too. So, and that's what we do at our office too. Whatever I'm saying, we are doing. And, uh, the next thing is that I want to get into, and, uh, and Mike brought up a really good point, that so many people give you a bad recommendation at some of those conferences, and I was at one of them where one of the, the speakers said that they have 30 workers, but the way she said it, it sounded like she has 30 employees, and then she gave out a speech on, on delegating, and uh, it was horrible, so I could not wait to the Q&A to able to tell her or ask her questions. I was like this sitting at the table because I just wanted to say it right away. As soon as I said it's time for q and I was like me. And uh, because what she said and on delegation and leveraging that what you need to do is soon as whatever you hate, just delegate it. And, uh, and don't even worry about it. They can handle it. Your new hires can handle it and all that. So that doesn't work. So what works is leveraging. And the way you leverage is you actually know what you are delegating out. So you cannot just delegate accounting because you don't know anything accounting and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but if you get the report from your accountant and you still don't know anything about accounting, that doesn't help you. It doesn't matter you delegated it. So that's why I recommend that you leverage. And then in with phone calls, because you need to find a way to able to handle the phone calls, you have two options. Option number one is hire somebody who is actually known 
or, or in the industry, meaning like your personal trainer or anybody who already works and know how to work with clients. They have in some way of knowing how to talk to them, how to close them. Or option two, completely delegate it even to a person who, who is out of the country and never even heard about fitness. Which one would you prefer? The one who already spoke to somebody in the fitness industry or, or somebody that you don't know anything about? And everybody's wrong. So the, the reason is, and I apologize for all my pictures, I actually delegated my slides to one of our employees and I think he's in love with me. But uh, <laughs> uh, so I, I did not plan to fill up the slide with all these pictures of me. So anyways, um, so I made a mistake, see? It was delegation, not, not uh, leveraging. So when you hire a third party, you don't trust them. And when you don't trust them, what do you do? You create a plan. So when you create a plan, you, even if you don't use that third party and you fire them or you don't want to use them anymore, at least you have a plan of action. You can put it in your business plan, you can put it in your operation manual. How many of you have operation manual besides you? Two. How many of you have actually a business plan, at least on a napkin or something? <laughs> okay, good. So not good, but at, it's, it's all right. So you definitely need a plan. I mean, he even had a plan, right? Um, Kevin McAllister from Home Alone if I said his name right, but um, he even had a plan. And the funny thing is, as he got punched in the face during the movie, he actually adjusted that plan and stick to it and just with adjustments. So that's why you need a plan so you can stick to some sort of an outline. Otherwise, you're just running around like a headless chicken. Sorry, I pushed it back. So and in my book, by the way, if you guys have it on the table, um, there is actually a whole chapter that I wrote about Kevin McAllister creating his own plan of business. I mean, not business, but for you, I use it to how to create your own for a business plan. So read it and at least create something so you have an outline because it will help you a lot. And then lastly, with this delegation, most people hire when they are in need. Do you guys agree with that? Hire when you're in need? Do you want to hire when you're in need or you want to hire before you're in need of hiring? Before. Yes. But however, most of us make that mistake that we hire when, oh my God, I can't handle it anymore. I need to hire somebody. And the problem is that most people just throw those guys everything that they can and uh, basically just delegate everything out and all of a sudden they get pissed and don't manage them. They usually come in uh, hot and heavy like, you know, this, what is this? Why are you not doing this? I'm doing all these things. Why can't you just do this one single thing? And that I call the seagull effect because what it does, you walk into the room uh, uh, loud, and mad, make a lot of noise, shit on everybody, and then leave. And that's <laughs> the seagull management, which doesn't work. And it, it will work if you want to demotivate your people. So do not do that. <laughs> Next, so what do you do to get started? Is number one, I just, if you guys could take a picture of this, and I'm more than happy to even send you an email about it, that what the action plan is, just because I don't want to run out of time here. But the, the number one goal is, is you have to develop scripts, and we talked about that is for each, every single thing, text message, phone calls, chatbots, everything. When I mean scripts, you really need to write it down for every single thing, everything that happens, like a walk-in, walk-out, uh, referral, uh, internet call, every single one of them have to have one. Then the FAQ, uh, every single scenario, and this is how you can actually develop your own um, um, internal and external content because your clients and your employees will have millions of questions coming to you uh, or how to do things. And if you create these videos, then go to fiverr.com. Uh, you can actually create the slides from it for five bucks. You can do so many things. You don't have to do it on your own. Just record the main content, the main concept, and then you can create all these videos. So if you can email me, I'm more than happy to talk to you about this. I just really don't want to piss off Mike here. So <laughs> I'm going to, uh, s speed up this a little bit and wrap it up. So the reason why I want to, I'm here again today because I have decided to start helping you so you can actually help me and uh, help people. Because every 90 seconds, one person dies from obesity uh, and that needs to be changed. I have lost my grandparents to it and I do not want to see another grandson to feel the loss that I did at that time. And if I have known what you guys all known in this room back then, they would be still alive. So that is basically my life mission, to put us up on obesity, because I know that together we can actually put a stop on it. And that's why I'm here today. And I understand that Elon Musk is actually working on creating this perfect planet that we can live on, and then uh, creating also another planet so we can live on Mars. 
but who the hell is going to live on those planets if we're killing ourselves by obesity every 90 seconds? So this is why I'm here to help you. So please help me to put a stop on obesity. And basically, that's it. Thank you very much for, <laughs> for this. <laughs> Thank you.